is back and open for business. I don't often say this, but your pitch was awful. You've got to be quiet for this little bit, Peter, if that's all right. Ouch. A place where budding entrepreneurs are given a once-in-a-lifetime chance. You have this most bizarre way of answering questions. Stop it. To present their wares to five captains of commerce. You wanted to see how credible we are. Yeah. So I'm about to show you. Well, show me. Some will succeed and go on to make millions. Others will fail and leave with nothing. Make him a counter offer. Tell him to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. With the occasional visit from some wealthy VIPs... I can't not give you money. I can't not make you an offer. First deal in the day. I didn't want it anyway. The hunt is on to find the next big money-making idea. Dragons are go. <laughs> Tonight. Good day, dragon. What does that mean? You're like a raft stuck in the middle of the sea. They don't know which way to go. Hang on, did you miss that last number, by the way? Because that made me gasp. Yep. Your mother must be so unbelievably proud of both yeah. of you. She should be. Oh, so do you want to ask a question? Well, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah, go, go for it, go for it, go for it. Um, is it all right to speak? I've been in the den for three years now. I think this is the steepest valuation I've ever seen. What a disaster. I think this could be something very special. So I'm Alex. And I am Nicole. I love this so much. I love this. This is my brother. We grew up together. <laughs> did um... we? <laughs> we did. Catwalk it, Nicole. When we walk into the den, I really hope that the dragons get the positive energy from what they see in front of them. <laughs> oh, I do love a bit of skincare. Yeah. As you get this age, you really need help with this. What is your secret, Peter? I've always wondered. I think, you know, plastic surgery helps quite a lot these days. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Behind those doors, destiny awaits. <gasps> Stop it. Oh, my Stop God. Stop it. <laughs> it's just so surreal. <laughs> What were you wow. expecting? <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK. Good day, dragons. <laughs> Sorry, this is just super surreal, but I'm so excited. My name is Alex, and this is my sister and best friend, Nicole. Hi, dragons. We are so excited to be here today to introduce to you our award-winning and eco-luxury skincare brand, Nini Organics. We are here today to ask for £50,000 in exchange for 10% equity in the company. When I was 16, I suffered from severe acne. My confidence was knocked and my positive shining light was dimming. After a strong dose of Rakutane, my acne cleared up, but my skin was left in bits, sensitive, dry and weak. I tried everything to get it back to healthy balance, but it was not until I discovered natural beauty that my skin and life changed for good. I love the power of natural and organic ingredients blended together. That's why I decided to be a formulator and do a formulation course. And then I worked in the skincare industry for over 10 years, working for some of the biggest natural brands, honing my knowledge and skills. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked as a special effects makeup artist and prop designer. Unfortunately, five years in, I had a severe reaction to one of the most commonly used chemicals in the field, so I had to walk away from it. And sadly, at the same time, our great-grandmother had passed away and left us £1,000 um, each. So we thought, why not invest in Nini and take it to market? And that's what we did. We have an accumulative turnover of over £1.3 million with 11,000 customers. We need a dragon to come on board and help open doors and build this brand. So thank you and we welcome any questions. OK. <laughs> Same. A natural and organic skincare range is the offering from brother and sister Alex Nicolau and Nicole Stanton. There we so go. So here you've got our Rain Mist, our Crimson Beauty Serum, our Detox Oil Moisturiser and Mask. I'm incredibly excited. Well, so am I. <laughs> the chatty siblings are seeking £50,000 in return for 10% of their beauty business. There you you go. have really got great skin. Thank you. Well, it's due to this. <laughs> Peter Jones is the first dragon to try and get a word in. <laughs> uh, OK, so in front of you, what you have... Oh, sorry, did you want to ask a question? 
Well, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah, go, go for it, go for it, go for it. Um, is it all right to speak? Yes, of yes, course, please. Of course, of course. We've been waiting months for um, to speak. <laughs> no. Why this? Why this type of business? Well, for me personally, skincare has always been a super, super safe space for me because when I had acne, I found so much comfort in locking my bathroom door as a kid and just exploring what my mum had in the cabinet. And I just knew that this was my passion, this was my calling, was to create my own brand. OK. Nicole, you had, you said, a reaction. Yes. A very bad reaction. Yeah. Tell me about that. So, in the film industry, they use polyurethane as one of their main chemicals to create props. And one time I was making a, a mould and I poured a lot of it, uh, the liquid, on my chest. That then caused this reaction where my skin started to open up, I had impetigo, and then every time I went back into the studio, it just caused a massive reaction again. Well, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I'm not sorry. For me, it was the best thing because it then led me to this, and genuinely, this is what I love doing. This is my now you my passion. That's the best reframe of any individual when <laughs> they have something ad that's adverse as that, yeah, and they treat that moment yeah. as a gift. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a great way to look at yeah. life. Alex, Nicole, they seem lovely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Now, where do you see this? big place. You've said you want a dragon to open some doors. Yeah. Yes. Whose doors? So we really want to be in stores. Obviously, Space and K would be great. Um, Liberties would be great here. Selfridges would be great. But we just haven't we haven't scratched the surface with the wholesaler for these bigger yeah. shops yet. So it really is your high-end specialist. Yeah. It's not a boot and a super drill. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's going into Space and K. Uh, yeah. 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 Can I ask a question, then, in terms of retail? We have a lot of beauty products come into the den, but there's yeah. also just a lot of them in the market. Yeah. And the key question I ask myself is, what is that, that one sentence story that separates you and gives you that sort of distinction from the rest of the market? What makes us super different is every single formula is made by myself. So all the ingredients within our formulas just help to give you that overall balance to your skin, because that's all we want is balance. Do you tell that story anywhere? Via our socials. Yeah. It's hard to put everything on a box, but via our socials and via our website, yes, you get Because when I saw this brand and when, before you came in, the last thing I thought your brand was was distinctive. Really? You, you even look at that there. Yeah. It's just all white. There's nothing distinctive about that. You're not offensive, you're not provocative, you're not emotional, you're not controversial in any way, so you're indifferent. If you're wallpaper, no one's ever going to see you. And right now, this is wallpaper. But you know? that's what we're happy to take that also, all on board, and we want to sit yeah. down and talk about that. 100%. I also want to note that you know we also, we don't just see the brand in retail; we see it as a spa brand. So when you go to get a facial, really, yeah. they use our products. So you that yeah. is really where we would like to see the brand yeah. as well. But how how are you going to do that? So they get so. This is good, because it's gone from, oh, yeah. this is all wonderful, to, <laughs> oh, the reality of business. So, if you're competing against an spa or a Navida, how are you going to take them out of a spa? That's really, really challenging, because yeah. people want that market leader. They want the brand that they respect. They want a brand that they know for 25 years. What makes you think, for one minute, a wonderful, brother and sister startup business is going to go, ah, oh, don't worry about them. <laughs> I'm lovely. You know what? Pick me. Yeah. Because I think that I don't... I'm going to challenge you. I don't think you've got a chance in hell. Maybe <laughs> for those bigger, bigger, huge spa operations, they might decide to pull a sister part to it and be like, we want to bring in more niche brands. Well, they might want to, but how are you going to make that happen? What's different about you? Well, we're a ritual that lives for the fantasy. What does that mean? <laughs> it means that when you use it, you are living in your fantasy of, like, this happiness, this kind of enjoyment of using products. But a ritual living in fantasy, that sounds like... That's more like, like a sex product. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it however you want to take it. It's up to you to, yeah. to digest it. Do you know what? I'll just give you some advice, right? The most powerful story you can tell about this brand is the story you told about where it came from. And then it will make us feel something. Yeah. But, like, we are the alternative beauty approach. So. Why? 
Because we, we do only use active ingredients, natural ingredients, Why? organic ingredients. Because it's the best for your skin. It's the best for the environment. And how did you come to know that was true? It's just innate within nature and obviously studying. Oh, and also oh because of my acne and because of her. Um, there we go, we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It doesn't take long, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> We're, we're, we're a ticking time bomb as a brand, and yeah. I think we've got all the basic things down. That it's just the little tweaks that you're saying in front of us right now that will go boom, boom straight away. Because the customers love the product. I can't stress that enough. Alex, Nicole, I would love to invest in you two. Yeah. You are oh. so much fun, and I would absolutely love working with you. Oh my god, okay. However, I just have zero appetite for oh. the enormous journey you're going to have to go on. Please don't underestimate it. To mm -hmm. make a breakthrough yeah. in this market, mm -hmm. the chances of achieving it is about this big, mm -hmm. and it's going to take an inexorbitant amount of work. So I'm going to say that I'm out. So, um, I have been involved in this industry but I couldn't agree more with Sarah. This is an incredibly, incredibly hotly contested industry. Mm -hmm. And I don't have an appetite for doing it again. So I'm afraid I won't be investing, I'm out. OK, guys, I think you are absolutely two cracking individuals. Thank you. <laughs> You would literally light up any day. The reality is, though, there are thousands of other people out there yeah. in the marketplace. These people have a large amount of money, obviously from a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. And I can't see how you're going to compete. So that's why you desperately need me. Amazing. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yes. This is your moment. Okay. <laughs> this is my moment. Okay, got it. I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Showing your negotiating skills right there. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, behind all that, there's this, this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to offer you all of the money. Okay. For 20% of the business. Yeah. Is that done? No. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, no. Please, ready. <laughs> to get that must mean that we've got something. Do you actually ready to need to discuss this? Alex, huh? Nicole. We want to hear from the other <laughs> amazing people. Oh, God. <laughs> I love your socks. I love Thank it. you. I am... Um, there's a lot of work to do from the driving the brand and the marketing perspective and figuring out how you go from a brand with an audience of, say, 20,000 online yeah. to 20 million online That's it. is my area of expertise. So I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> I'll give you all of the money <laughs> for 20% of the business. OK. Guys. You're great. Thank you. You are great. <laughs> so I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> going to offer you all of the money. I also want 20%. OK. Do you want to go chuck some Yes, you? thank you. Back to the window. Oh, my God. A staggering turnaround leaves Alex and Nicole with three competing bids to consider. Peter Jones, Stephen Bartlett and Tuka Suleiman have all offered £50,000 in return for the 20% equity the pair originally put on the table. I mean, I know exactly what we should do. What? Ask if Stephen and Peter can go halves okay. if they would share 20%. OK. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> right. Hands are sweating. I know. I mean, so... thank you all so much for your offers. Um, 
Tuka, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. But we did just want to ask if you two would be willing to go in together. Just because you do both such different things. And I feel like combined, you could really help grow the, the business if you did half the money for 10% each. Yeah, 100%. Yeah? Yeah. I'd be de <gasps> delighted to. Wow. Thank you. Are we, are we, are we like that? Yeah, come on. Yes. <laughs> From skin cream purveyors to dragon slayers. <laughs> we did it. Alex and Nicole leave the den with £50,000. <laughs> and the backing of a duo. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> with the skills to make their skincare business shine. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, my heart, my heart. That's going to be a, an enjoyable, fun journey. An enjoyable journey. Yeah. I think, I think this could be something very special. I could be the model, you know. Actually, can I honestly say, I think you'd be the perfect model. Well, I, let's consult. Let's have a look. <laughs> 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 oh. Pete Jones, Stephen, Deborah, Sarah, and Tuka. Hi, I'm Shanette. And I'm Shanice. We're identical twins. And we're from London. <laughs> Can we have one of you guys? <laughs> Please. Fingers crossed. Working with my sister is, um, can be difficult. <laughs> yes. Our strategy when we go in is for me to give my sister a little bit more leeway to answer questions, because for me, I love chatting, <laughs> and I tend to forget that she's there. Ready, 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 ready. Hi, Dragons. I'm Shanice Thompson. And I'm Shanette Thompson. And we're here today seeking £50,000 for 15% equity of her business, Rent2Score, an innovative company that tracks rent payments history, will generate a score that selected lenders will use to determine affordability when renting or buying a property. The idea came about after migrating from Jamaica and seeing how expensive it was for a family to afford paying their rent. The normal credit score was low due to prioritizing their rent over paying their other bills. You may have heard the question, why can I afford to pay my rent, but can I get a mortgage? Did you know that one in five consumers has a low credit score, which makes them look risky to lenders? Credit Reference Agency collects lots of different data on consumers and grouped it into a single score. This has a significant impact and amount of credit extended and the interest we repay. However, they neglect one of the largest and highest priority bills on people's monthly outgoing their rent. Our aim is to help generation renters and low credit holders get approved and secure their future. We're here to revolutionise the market and help that one in five get approved by using a rental payment history. Unlike most alternative lenders, we use rent payments to determine their affordability. This is done by collecting data such as a list of addresses, work information, rent payment details, CCJs and even eviction notices. We believe that renters should have the right to buy and let properties based on their renting history and not their personal credit. You can afford to pay your rent on time, you can afford to pay your mortgage. An alternative credit score platform that takes into account rental records for people looking to rent or get a mortgage is the proposition from Shanice and Shanette Thompson. The Jamaican-born duo are seeking £50,000 in return for a 15% share in their tech startup. Deborah Meaden is first to scrutinise the pair's plans to shake up the finance sector. So, if I was a landlord looking to let, because that's what you're trying to help, you're trying yes. to help um, renters overcome the barrier of a landlord looking yes. up what their credit yes. rating looks like and saying no. So, if I was the landlord, what data would I be able to look at that would make me feel comfortable about that renter? Um, as we listed before, the main thing is CCJs, 
Do you have any CCJs and eviction notices? So those are the main ones for the landlords to look at because um, if you go out and try to rent somewhere, landlords don't know if you ever had the eviction notice. And you can lie and say, you know what, I've never been evicted before. So we collect 12 months data. And what we do, we go back to your prior landlord and we get the information such as how much was your last rent, um, any missed payment. And all of this information is put into a number. Why would a landlord I'm, but, I'm, I'm one of them. So why would I use your service if you haven't got the actual data in anywhere near in the similar comparison to an Experian, for okay. example? Because Experian, that's why they exist. Yes. Yeah. So but you, you use Experian because that gives me a full credit check yeah. on them as an individual. You know you, you've passed first base, basically. Then from there, you then move directly to a request for information. That request for information asks the specific questions. How long have they lived there? The rental, how regular are the payments? That comes back. And then that gives me whether they're a good tenant. That yeah. credit process is quite simple. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we don't want to focus on your credit cards or your phone bills or anything. We just want to focus on the rent. We're trying to build up a database so that landlords, banks, and anyone who wants to rent a property or say, OK, I'm going to let you purchase a property, is by checking the history to say, over the last five years, this person has been immaculate in paying, let's say, £1,800 of rent. They want a mortgage for £850 a month. I can see that this person is genuinely great at paying this, so I have all this information. I can offer them and I, Look, I... I, I... It's always admirable. When, <laughs> first, it's great also, to meet you. Yeah. But the thing is, you're, you're dealing with financial institutions, and if those financial institutions have a level of governance. Yeah. They are forced to go through partners, and those specific partners are the likes of Experian and, and other specifically approved credit agencies that are FCA approved and have been going for a long time. Yeah. You're not going to be able to circumnavigate that by coming in with, oh, by the way, we've got our latest app. Yeah. That's, th this is a real problem for you. Can you tell me about your, um, your, your professional backgrounds? So, um, professionally, <laughs> I am a economist. I have a PhD in philosophy, and I also have a law degree. And what about... Me, I've studied business management in the past, and now I'm a student nurse. And you, and you moved from Jamaica when you were young to the UK. Jamaica, by the way, is the best place on earth. Oh, thank you. Hearing, <laughs> hearing the little twang in your accent makes yes. me think I need to go back <laughs> to the that. grill. I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> we moved from Jamaica when we were 17. Most of our life was not that easy growing up, so... What do you mean? Well, we came from a very poor background. Yeah. Our mum migrated when we were seven to make sure that we had a better life. Yeah, and um, it wasn't so easy growing up because I remember at 13, we lived by our home. We had, we had to, to move, move out and lived on our own home. So. We grew up fast. We had to become an adult really, really quick. So I remember, like, we had to do our own laundry, we had to make our own meals and get our ready self ready for school. I have to say, your mother must be so unbelievably proud of both yeah. of you. She is. Uh, she should be, as much as we are. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> she should be, because we're blinking brilliant. Yeah, and you're she right. Here, <laughs> she's, she's, she's the ones that motivate us for getting an education all that as well, because she never had the choice. So studying is something like can never stop. We're going to always want more, accomplish Listen, more. Honestly, the best, the best school in life is, is, in my view, starting a business. Yes. And even success or fail, it's yes. all amazing uh, feedback and knowledge. And like, yeah, definitely. Failure is feedback, and feedback mm -hmm. is knowledge, and knowledge is power. So, sometimes it's really hard to say because you really like the people standing in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, and I don't just mean like personally, because you are great, Thank but you. also I like your story, I love your um, tenacity, I love that you've... You know, you've, you've got hold of life and you've yeah. made something of it. And I love all of those things, which is going to make what I'm about to say really hard. <laughs> um, I, I think you're in a very vulnerable position. Yeah. Because if you are right, then you have got competitors just ready to flick a switch. Yeah. With legacy authority. And if I was a landlord now, and I was offered that from somebody with huge legacy, who I knew, I knew all about them, understood, know that they've got a history in this, 
I'm probably going to take their rating versus your rating. Um, so I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say those. Well, maybe I'll write them. Maybe I'll write. I tell you what, I'll write them, and it make me feel better. Uh, I'm really sorry. I, can't, I don't want to say it. Thanks. <laughs> Jeanette and Janice, um, yeah, it's it's this is this is quite a brutal market. Um, yeah. I genuinely love the fact that you're you're thinking and dancing and you're doing everything you can <laughs> to come up with a with a business idea. Um, but it's not something for Ooh. today that I can invest in. I'm going to say that I'm out. But I'm wishing you all the very best. Go and do something amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, um, I, I find that to be an entrepreneur, you've got to start with an idea. Yeah. Definitely. So you've got to tick there. <laughs> right? However, you've got to think the idea through. Yeah. And I get the impression that you guys are very excited about this. You're trying to solve a problem that you face yourself. You haven't actually put yourself in a position looking at it as a business point of view. And that's what concerns me. So therefore, I'm out. Oh, thank you. Jeanette and Janice, um, I've listened to everything that you've said. Yeah. There's just huge alarm bells going off in my head. So it's with a heavy heart, I have to say, I just, I don't believe you are going to succeed in this market with this business model. So I'm really sorry, but I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> How are you feeling? OK. We're always optimistic. <laughs> Inspiration creates inspiration, and your mother was clearly an inspiration, and she created you. Thank you. Two inspirations. Thank you. Um, um, as an investor, I look at this business, and I try and find the path for me making a return. Yeah. And I can't see that path for me making a return, any time in the short term at least. So I'm not going to invest. But I'm going to make you an offer, which is I would love the opportunity to mentor both of you because I think there's a ton of potential there. And whether it's this business, you win at, or the next business, what I know for sure is you two are going to win at life. That's amazing. That's even, no, that's, that's, even, yeah, that's, better, even better. that's even better. That's even better. Because at least we will build and grow to the level that we want to go. Can I have a hug? I really want to yes, give you a hug. Please. I got emotional. You're such a sweetheart. Well done. Thank well done, you. honestly. So, so proud of you. I'm going crazy. So no deal for an emotional Shanice and Shanette. Thank you so much. Right, well and done. this is the best experience ever, guys. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Bye. 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 But while they may be leaving the den without the £50,000 they were originally seeking... Why am I crying? I wasn't even crying. It just started to come. <laughs> this has been anything but a wasted journey. That is a wonderful gift to give them. They'll give me a lot as well. I think sometimes don't realise that with mentorship relationships, you get just as much back in return. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted somebody who has a track record to push it in the right direction. Definitely, that's the best thing you can ask for. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I know. I've got a little... I've got a little note from my son. That you, oh, nice. Yeah, just in my pocket. Oh, what does it say? It says, you, you do well, Dad. <sighs> my name's William Watt, and my business is all about a new type of adventure over land and water. Ah. Anybody being called water swimming? No, but I've seen you do it. It's really good. You've done it with your mum. Yeah, my mum loves it. Mm. You've never done cold water swimming too? Mm -mm. Never fancied it? I, I like to get off a yacht. Go on the bay, have a little swim, come back, have lunch. <laughs> Not quite the same as being in a lake up north on no, Boxing no. Day or whatever. I won't be going up north yeah. in a lake, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like me. Right, here we go. Game on. Hello? 
Dragons. Hi. My name's Will. This is Lauren. Hi. The business I run is called Above Below. And over the last three, four years, we've been developing a new outdoor activity. We call it cross-country swimming. What we do is we combine the above, which is a hike, with a swim, the below. When you combine these two things, there's a magic happens, an alchemy. There's all of the mental health benefits of being outside. Then you've got all the euphoria of being immersed in cold water. Our objective is to get as many people as possible to enjoy this activity. And we do that by being the first, and we think the best, at building the routes, the events, and the kit that makes this whole activity practical, accessible, possible. Events, we've had 2,000 people do our events, and we host a sort of slightly infamous event in London where you run and swim during the winter through all the parks and ponds. It's called the Swimmer. Uh, so what Lauren's doing is transforming with our rock raft. This is the first product we made, and we know it's a niche, but it's patented, it does what it says. Uh, it's a raft for your rucksack. And then around that, over the last 12 months, we've started to build some other bits of kit that make that transition to land to water a bit more comfortable, uh, a bit more accessible. Mm. So when you've been swimming, warm up your head and your trunk. So we've made a hat. Will, this is supposed to be a pitch, not a story. Uh -huh. <laughs> so be really clear on what you're pitching. Yeah. Is it the product or is it the activity or...? Yeah, so it's our whole business is how to get more people to do it and we make the kit and the routes to make it possible. So how much do you want and what percent? Yes. So we've sold 20% of our stuff all over the world. So we think what we can do for our sort of slightly... We, we're small. We're small. You haven't answered my question. So what's your question, sorry? How they much ask, are you asking for? We are asking for £100,000 right, or 5% okay, of the business. All right, that's better. Yeah. And with your help, we think we can grow this niche and that's what we want to do. Is that the end of your pitch? Or do you want to introduce what you're going to do, a demonstration, or what is, what is going on now? So, um, this is what Lauren's done. We're going to put this in the water so you can see it float. Great. You can now set off for a swim, and then you get to the other side, you've got all your kit with you. It unlocks the set landscape to new adventures. A protracted pitch from fresh air fiend Will Watt, who's seeking £100,000 in return for a 5% share in his company. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank, Thank you, Lauren. Lauren. Peter Jones is first to take the plunge with the questions. Will, um, I don't often say this, but your pitch was awful. Oh, sorry, sir. There didn't seem to be anything there that you could hold on to that actually says, this is an amazing product for this reason. This is who is going to buy it. This is why we're going to be successful. Mm. I don't understand this. What is the business that you're pitching? Um, as I tried to, so strategically, we have roots, which is really important. I mean, what we're doing is, in a way, you're market making. This is a new activity that has a... You're doing it again, Will. What's the business? Roots. What does Roots do? A, a race. Shows people where you can go. Roots is a race. Roots it's is a, a race? It's like if you're in mountaineering, you need to... When you go out, you right, need to, Sorry, Roots is... You have this most bizarre way of answering questions... Oh, God, ..which sorry. doesn't answer them. Right. What's Roots? Is it a race? No, Roots are routes that you can swim and hike in OK, the UK. so Roots are routes that you can swim and hike. Yeah, that's then you route. have... And then events are things that we host. OK, and part. then the third part is product. Is product. So, Will. It's OK. I'm not going to ask you too many questions about how this all works, cos there's an expert amongst one of the, our dragons. I don't know if we'd call me an expert, just cos I've been out lake swimming a couple of times, but I absolutely love that you would put me in the expert field when there's an expert yeah. here. <laughs> Compared to me, she'd be an expert. Yeah. So let's, let's just start. So what proportion in the first year of your sales was the event and what proportions was product? 
Yeah, so 2019, I mean, we're not doing this properly at this point. The thing that's funding it is actually the swimmer event in London. All right. It got very popular. I appreciate that. We would I put it wanna, into this. I just want some numbers. 2020, 26K revenue, 8K loss. Yeah. The end of 2020, we crowdfunded. So how much have you raised? So we raised 328,000. 328. 2021? 56k yep. revenue, minus 40 loss. Yep. And 22 to 23, yep. 55k revenue, and minus 180 loss. So I'm assuming you've got a valuation of 2 million. Yeah. Hang yeah. on, did you miss that last number, by the way? Because that made me gasp. <laughs> yeah. Minus 180 yeah. net. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, you've got a valuation of two million. Yeah. So I'm assuming somewhere you got 1.8 in cash. No. So what are you valuing at two million, though? What part of the business? Because the routes, you're not, you're not valuing routes at two million. I don't imagine you're valuing the races, which you said only 2,000 people have attended at two million. So is it this floating device you're valuing at two million? Um, I, to me, the value is in we've created a whole new category of activity. We've created a worldwide patented product that doesn't have any competitors at all. What's the patented product? The Ruckruff. But it won't be patented, that's just gonna be a design pattern. Uh, yeah, a, a design. Well, that's, that's worthless. Mm. What have you got a patent on? The whole of the Ruckruff kit. The design of it. So if I change a few things of that, I can still bring out the same product. You would have to make it heavier. Why couldn't it be lighter? Uh, because anything below is, it would infringe the patent. So this is the thing worth two million? Uh, I think, no, I, 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 would, I would say that the whole uh, lifestyle, business and brand around the thing and what it enables, in the same way that Patagonia started making carabiners that enabled climbing and then grew, that's where we want to get to. How big is your brand in terms of, give me community size? 5,000 Instagram. I don't think that's Patagonia. Not yet, no. Not yet, no. I think this is, I've been in the den for three years now, I think this is the steepest valuation I've ever seen. And yeah. In relation to the value that I see before me and the business I see before yeah. me. 55K revenue you made. You lost almost 200K profit last year. And the, the business is worth 2 million. That is, I mean, not to use one of Peter's phrases, but that's cuckoo land. That's really something. It doesn't make sense to me, so I'm gonna say that I'm out. Well, yeah. I, I still sit here really bewildered. This, this is, I'm gonna to relay to you what this looks yeah. like sitting here in this chair. A business that's not just failing to grow, it's actually going slightly backwards. And then when you raise some money from crowdfunding, you manage to make a 40,000 loss into 180,000 loss. Yeah. So at what point does it make money? Well, I mean, it would make money. So can I just talk about in sales terms? It'd be a bit better if you answer the questions that I ask you. If we sold 1,000 units of the body warmer and the ruck raft, we break even at around a, a revenue of 300. And when will that be? Year five, we think. It'll take us five so years. So by year five, I've recouped all of the losses yes. that you've made so far. Yes, and we've got a business Does that... that sound like a good investment to you? I think it... I, I think, it, in all honesty, I think it probably depends on what type of investment you're looking for. We know. We know. Sorry. Well, I'm I mean, looking for an investment yeah. that makes a return on my investment. Yeah. Listen, well, mm. you actually seem like a really nice guy. OK. But this is a really bad pitch. There's, there's just given me no reason to invest, so I'm afraid I won't be Will, I'm out. Will, let me tell you where I stand, right? Um, you seem like a very nice guy, but to me, listening to you, you, you're like a raft stuck in the middle of the sea, don't know which way to go. So therefore, I'm not gonna give you a lifeline, and I'm out. Um. Without being brutal, this is a really unfocused pitch. Yep. This pitch should have been very much predicated on 
I've created a global patented inflatable rucksack. And the reason why I've done that is because 10 to 20,000 people are out swimming up and down just in the UK alone. And they don't have this product. And they're all going to want it. And then go to, by the way, I know it's going to be successful because I run trails at the moment from Land's End to John O'Groats. And everybody wants to buy this. Mm. You've explained the rationale. You've explained what it is. You've explained why people will want it. And you didn't do that. Yeah. And you haven't given yourself a chance. So for that reason, I'm out. But I just hope you take a lot away today because you could have something. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a beautiful description of what I was trying to get across, and I wish I had done that. Well, I loved your pitch. I enjoyed every word. I was right there with you. I genuinely did look. I wanted to invest in this business so bad with my heart, didn't even let my head get a look in because I was so excited. I thought, oh, I can do this, I can get on board with him. Really passionate about it. And then I'm sat there listening to these guys and I'm thinking, man, they're being a bit mean today. But you've got to think about your audience. Mm. One out of the five of us was yep. potentially into this. And to everybody else's point, you've done a terrible job of selling the business. You've sold the dream, but you haven't sold the investment. Yeah. So, I'm going to say I'm out. And I know it's been a tough time, but I hope you've had a lot of learning from it. Yeah, we, uh, we have. Thanks, Will. Well done, Will. Good you. luck with Thank Armour, you. Will. Will leaves the den with plenty of advice but no investment. I'm a bit deflated. <sighs> Started badly, not worse. Peter was just right out of the gate. He was like, right, that was the worst I've ever seen. I was like, oh, man. But you've got to do these things. You've got to put yourself under the scrutiny. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, really. I'm Derry, and I'm from Wigan. It wasn't really scary here. I've created a unique experience based in a woodland. I think the dragons are going to love it. Yeah, your picture's just a bit off there. There you go. It's better. So my journey so far has been amazing. Every day's exciting, every day something new. I'm like a 12-year-old playing about in the woods again, building dens. You're never too old to play in the trees. Trees. I mean, there's an age where you go, come on, get out of the trees, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then there's an age not. where you get back in the trees. <laughs> there we go. Now the nerves kick in. Hello, dragons. My name's Derry Green. I'm the owner and founder of The Secret Garden Glamping. I'm here today to look for an investment of £100,000 for a 5% equity stake in my business. The Secret Garden Glamping is a multi-award winning, five-star, luxury glamping site based in a beautiful four-acre woodland. It all started in the first lockdown of 2020. Stuck at home with my two young children, I had to come up with new and exciting ways each day to keep them entertained. The first day, we decided to have a camping trip in the garden. It was great fun, but waking up on the wet grass in the morning wasn't very exciting. That day, I decided to build a deck to camp on for the evening. As days turned into months, I just kept building a bit more each day with the kids. And by the end of the first lockdown, we created what I now know to be a glamping site. Whilst on my journey, I kept updating my own social media with what I was up to with the kids each day. It went viral. And I had people contacting me, asking if they could book the unit for a holiday. At the time, it seemed crazy, but with nothing to lose, I thought, why not list it online? Once listed, within the first three days, it was fully booked for two years in advance. I quickly realised there was a gap in the market for what I produced. 
We now have nine bespoke units, with planning permission for a further four. We've had 100% occupancy since the day we opened, with the earliest available weekend being over two years in advance. With your investment, I'd like to open more sites and make the Secret Garden Glamping the go-to brand for luxury glamping in the UK and abroad. Bespoke glamping units are the brainchild of Derry Green, who's seeking £100,000 for a 5% stake in his business. And the entrepreneur's pitch has clearly got Peter Jones firmly in his camp. Derry, what a story. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely inspiring. Did you really build that yourself, though? E everything you see there is, is built by me, yeah. But then as it's grown and the business has grown, I've had to take on more people. And is your background building? Nope, absolutely not. Previous to this, I used to have a transport company. But I've always been handy and I, I, I hate being bored. And, and you built that in your garden? Uh, the first one, yeah. Um, and then as we've expanded now, we've expanded into the woodland. And what did it cost to put that together so far? Uh, I've invested just over half a million now in, in building everything. And that's your money? Uh, so that's come from the, the revenue from the business. Wow. So give me an idea of the income now. So for this year, uh, we're going to do 1.1 million in revenue with a gross of just under 880,000 and a net of around 470,000. God, Derry, this is outstanding. I love this. Thank you. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've, 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 look, I've actually gone quite clammy. <laughs> I almost don't want to ask you any questions. Just go straight to an offer. <laughs> <laughs> By all means, do so. That'll be fine. Okay. Derry, hi. Hi, Derry. Um, you won't be surprised. I've got questions. It's an industry I spent my entire life in. Yep. So, what's your season? 365 days a year. OK, and you've got... 100% occupancy for the year coming up at weekends. And where are you at midweeks? So our midweek occupancy is fully booked for the next 18 months in advance. Oh, my goodness. Well, my next question is going to be tariffs. Yeah. Because the rule we always said is if it's booking too fast and too far in advance, we're probably not charging enough money. Yeah. So what do your tariffs look like? So obviously they will fluctuate through the season. Uh, so I don't do that at the minute. The reason being... I set this up for me and my children, um, and it's always grated on me that, that people try and capitalise on, on when children are off school. So my rate is flat across the whole year, whether it be summer holidays, whether it be winter. So for 2023, the average nightly rate is £225 a night, and for 2024, the average nightly rate is £245 a night. You must know that is way too cheap. Yeah. You could double your prices and probably yeah. so. And I guess you are making a conscious decision to have the prices where they are. Absolutely. It just didn't sit right with me. Derry, I, I, I think you're great. <laughs> this could have gone one way or the other with me. You know, you could have walked in and I could have thought, what a disaster, you know. Or you could have walked in and made me feel the way that you've made me feel, which is, this is really exciting. You've got a completely fresh set of eyes mm -hmm. and there is a lot of complacency around the industry. Absolutely. And it's an industry I spent my life in, but it, it felt like we were cutting... We, we were the first people ever to have an online booking system, so we were driving the industry. But it feels like an industry that gets dragged kicking and screaming doing the next thing, you know? It's Absolutely. kind of, guys, get ahead of the customer, <laughs> you know, do something exciting. So, I'm going to make you an offer and this doesn't happen very often. but I'm going to offer you all of the money at what you've asked for. Wow. For 5% of the business. Wow. Thank you. Derry, I tell you now, I was going to make you an offer from the minute you walked in after you described the business. And having met you and having listened to you, I think you'd be a great person to work with. You really would. You've just got an amazing gift that not many people have. So, I'm going to offer you all of the money for what you've asked for. So, I'm going to offer you £100,000 for 5%. Thank you. Derry, I, I love this sort of stuff. I take the kids camping, 
I'm, I'm watching that video thinking, it just looks amazing. Thank and you. you, I think you have such a vision of where you're going to take this business. And I would love nothing more than to be involved. So I'm also going to offer you all of the money at the rate that you've asked for, the 5%. Thank you. Um, Derry. I may not be in the hospitality business, mm -hmm. but I'm in the property business. And I think that's where I can help. And I'm going to make you an offer. I'll give you all of the money for 5%. OK, thank you for your offer. How are you feeling? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to keep it together now. It, it genuinely... It's, it's, it's OK to show how you feel, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Derry, I'm going to tell you where I am as well. It's funny, cos I'm like, I'm... I don't want to say that, but I feel really proud of you for some reason. <laughs> Because, like, you're such a decent bloke, and for you to have created something so wonderful from such an, an authentic story of trying to provide something for your children, and for you, of all people, to be successful because of that, is amazing. To the point where I think I've taken my dragon hat off a little bit here. Because, obviously, with her background and everything else, Deborah is just perfect for this. And um, I just don't think... I just don't think I'd be the right dragon for you. I don't think I'd have the level of passion. No, you um, definitely wouldn't be the expertise. right dragon. No. Unsurprising. So, so, Are you out? Um, so with that, I'm going to wish you the very, very best, but I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you. Um, can I take a break? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, it's that time. Can. I've always wanted to do this. Derry has four competing bids to mull over. With Peter Jones, Sarah Davies, Tuka Suleiman, and Deborah Meaden all offering £100,000 in return for a 5% stake in his business. So, <laughs> thank you for all your time and, and obviously for the offers. Deborah, when you started talking then, what you said was exactly right. It feels like... Sometimes it feels like I'm, I'm insane, I guess, cos I can see it so clearly, and trying to explain it to other people who are still doing... It's like, yeah, it's like... Not the, the off-the-shelf lodges, yeah. bang them in together, you know. It, it, know. it does, and then for you to sit there and just validate everything that I think in my head on a daily basis, just, yeah, it got me there. And how you just said is exactly how I think, and if you're thinking the same, I'd love to accept your offer. Well done. I am so <laughs> pleased, cos I genuinely... Oh, let's do it. Well done, you. Delight for Derry. Well done, mate. Take care. ..who leaves the den with the £100,000 he was originally seeking after bagging the backing of a dragon with a wealth of experience in his chosen field. Wow. Could I give you a hundred grand for two and a half percent? And you're, you've got a free investment. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't give away two and a half percent. I'm not sure I would. <laughs> oh, I still can't get it. I'll get it together the whole time. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Are you crying because you're happy with him, or because you didn't get the investment? <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry. just so happy for him. <laughs> it's lovely. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> Next time on Dragon's Den. Oh! Isn't it good we've got a dragon that knows a lot about football and Gary Neville here? What's the extra 20,000 for, Tuka? It's a bit of spice. That's like Dracula. You live in a very different space to the space that... I live in a council house in Withington. I like them sort of markups. You're absolutely incredible. You actually make me a little emotional. But what does it matter if they have a little hanky panky? What's wrong with that? Well, no, that's different. That's what a hanky panky pod. Do you need planning permission for that? Is that the first ever entrepreneur to get six offers? Yes. Yes. Wow, that's a record.